Welcome to r slash reddit revenge. This is the story of someone getting back at someone with revenge after being wronged. And today we have two great stories, so subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story. A-hole driver almost makes me run over a man on a bike and harasses me for being foreign. The second story. Temporary housing situation goes sour when landlord starts extorting cash and stealing property. On to the first story. Drive like an a-hole? Pay 400 euros. A bit of backstory. I'm a 28-year-old American guy who's been living in southwest Germany for a little over two years with my German wife. Though my German isn't the best yet, I know enough to get through daily life out here and understand just about everything when I'm paying enough attention. We live in an apartment with a small parking lot for guests, and each apartment has one garage big enough to fit one car in each. If a guest comes to visit, the size of the parking lot makes it very difficult or near impossible to get in and out of the garage. This is all important later. At the time, I was working at a small cafe, about a 10-minute drive from our apartment. My job was extremely strict with working hours, so I was in at 7 a.m. and out the door and in my car at 4.30 p.m. Mondays through Fridays. After about three months of working there, I noticed every day on my drive home that the same blue car with a black stripe down the middle was either in front of me or behind me every day, up until I parked at my apartment to where he would continue down the road. No biggie, I just assumed it was someone with the same type of work schedule that lived in the same small town as me. After a while, I noticed every time this guy was behind me, he would take any opportunity to overtake me, even though there was always about 20 to 30 cars directly in front of me going the same speed every day. It was a two-way road with one lane going each way, all the way to where I lived. I thought nothing of it. I knew I was a slower driver since I didn't fully understand the German rules of the road yet and didn't want to take the chance of getting a ticket or worse. So I was used to people passing me even though I never went under the speed limit. Anyways, this went on for a while, with him still passing me almost every day most of the time, cutting me off, making me slam on the brakes. On one particular day, he was extremely impatient and aggressive, to where he tried to pass me in a one-lane roundabout, to where he almost sideswiped my car. He ended up bailing from the attempt and fell back behind me. At this point, I'm peeved, but I hold back my anger and continue to drive normally. About five minutes later, I'm almost home, driving up a pretty steep winding road, with very tight turns. As I'm near the first bend, I see a man on a bicycle on my side of the road. So I veer to the middle of the road to give him some room while I pass, and I could see there was no oncoming traffic. At this exact moment, the a-hole tries to pass me again, almost hitting me again. I couldn't move to my right or I would have hit the man on the bike. This a-hole again bails from his obviously idiotic and dangerous attempt at passing me again and continues behind me. I finally got to my apartment, and when I parked, for some reason I looked in my mirror, and who do I see parked behind me? You guessed it, the a-hole. He looks peeved. I don't know what this guy plans on doing, and I have no intention of finding out. So I get out of my car and instantly go to the back of my car and grab the tire iron, but keep it hidden, so he doesn't see it or think I'm going to attack him. He gets out of his car, to where I say to him in my broken German, can I help you? He immediately scuffs and asks, where are you from? Scheiß Auslander? For those who don't know, Scheiß Auslander is a very rude and disrespectful way of saying foreigner, something like effing foreigner. I ask him, does it matter where I'm from? I live here now. He scuffs again and started a whole speech about how people like you are the problem with this country and I shouldn't even be here and how you should be thanking me since it's my tax money paying for you to be here. Side note, I came here legally and between me and my wife's jobs, we live pretty comfortably with no government aid. I stop him in the middle of his rant and say, you don't know anything about me and what does any of this have to do with you driving like an a-hole? At this point, it looks like he's seeing red and continues to scream obscenities at me for about 30 seconds. He's suddenly interrupted by a loud hey, where a man wearing a helmet runs right up to him and slams him against his car, so hard it cracks his window with his back. I'm so confused for a bit while this man is pinning him to his car, absolutely enraged, screaming at this a-hole, and then it clicked to me. This is the man on the bike. I didn't understand everything being said, but it was something along the lines of, you almost killed me, WTF is your problem. The shouting went on for about two minutes, until the man on the bike forced the a-hole into his car and made him drive off. As much as I wished, this isn't the end of the story. About a month goes by, and on a Saturday, my wife and I come home from shopping. As we turn into our apartment parking, the only way into our garage is blocked by a car. The car, blue with a black stripe. My wife notices that I'm more peeved than I should be about this, because we had this situation before with other cars. Everyone that lives in this apartment is very nice, and we all have each other's phone numbers in case of an emergency, or for this kind of situation. It's normal to receive a text from a neighbor at least once a week, asking if we have a guest parked in the way. We don't really have friends in this area, so it was never our guest parked there. 
So my wife starts to send out a text, asking for whoever has the guest if they could kindly move the car. While she's doing this, I'm calling the landlord, who's told us multiple times if someone blocks our way to the garage, to call her so she can call a tow truck. Obviously, nobody in our building does this, because it's usually not a big deal, and a simple text could solve it. I tell her what's going on and give her the details of the car. I hear her let out a sigh. Ah, uh, him again. Okay, I'll deal with it, and she hangs up. Apparently, this man has given another neighbor of ours problems, before I tell my wife to not send out the text, and that we should go get a coffee instead. There's a cafe directly in front of our apartment parking. My wife looks confused but says okay. We're sitting in the outdoor part of the cafe, with a clear view of the apartment parking. While I explain to her the whole story of this guy, and what he did last month, because I never told her about it before. Eventually I see a tow truck in the apartment parking, and point it out to my wife, and she almost can't contain her laughter. I wasn't able to hear, but eventually the a-hole noticed his car was being towed and ran outside to his car, which was already on the truck. All I heard was a lot of screaming but didn't understand anything. The truck driver eventually left with his car, and the a-hole was just standing there. He looked across the street and noticed my wife and I watching the whole thing. I smiled and waved, took a sip of my coffee. He walked back inside with other defeat. I later found out that the a-hole is the father to one of the girls, who lives in the same building as me. She knocked at my door the next day and asked about the situation, which I explained everything. Thankfully, she was very understanding and even apologized for her father's behavior. She also told me that this isn't the first time her father's anger got him in trouble. My wife, being the nicest person in the world, made her cookies later that week to show no hard feelings towards her. She laughed, told us her dad had to pay 400 euros to get the car back. She was actually pretty happy her father got what was coming to him. After that, we actually became pretty good friends with her and her boyfriend. Now, every time the a-hole comes to visit his daughter, he parks his car across the street and won't say a word to me. And as far as I know, he drives a different way to home from work. The second story is, Craigslist room for rent goes sour. I was in the process of joining the military, simply waiting for the date to enter service. It would take at least a month, but no more than a year. Apartment lease had expired, no month-to-month -month payment option. Looking for some short-term housing. I was single, worked two part-time jobs, and had cash in savings. I'm quiet, flexible, simple needs. Just needed the simplest of accommodations. I went to Craigslist. Met with a woman who advertised a room for rent. We'll call her Jill. Jill was 20-something single and came from a wealthy family, who bought her this small three-bedroom house, gave her a nice car, paid her bills. Jill didn't like to work, she just sold her art. She made awful graphic art fanfiction on her PC, probably never sold anything, but was completely obsessed with her own work and would talk about it constantly. Jill had pets. So many pets, like 20 cats, 4 dogs, a room of birds out of their cages, and several aquariums. A bit weird slash slightly skewed version of reality, but seemed nice, had a room available and price was okay. I would pay a flat rate for rent and utilities, provide my own food, and come and go as I please. Neither of us ever signed anything, just details via text and email. She benefited from my moving in, as I had transferred my cable internet connection to her house, got the modem hooked up and used my own wireless router, and let her use it for free. I also have carpentry experience, so I helped her repair some door frames and some wood trim in addition to patching up some drywall. Helped her out a lot, all while requesting nothing in return. The first week was nice. Things fell apart rapidly after that. She became manipulative, started making financial demands. The electric bill was high. I needed to pay my part. She had bought enough groceries for both of us without informing me, but now that milk had soured and bread molded, I needed to pay for wasted groceries. Old busted up doorknob on the side of the house broke off while taking out the trash, so I needed to buy a new one, etc. Individually, these didn't bother me much, but there was a pattern. After just weeks, living expenses had tripled the agreed upon amount. I told her that this couldn't happen anymore. I would pay the agreed upon amount and buy my own food, period. This settled things for a week. Get back from work. In my room, my guitar was gone, and in its place, a bill. A bill from a plumber who had installed a toilet. My bathroom needed some work done. Jill had lost all trust that I would fulfill financial obligations, after I freaked out about money before. My guitar was hostage, locked in her bedroom until I paid for a toilet upgrade. She literally added a padlock to her bedroom door. Time to get out. I told her I was moving out the next day. A friend already offered me his guest room. She could keep the guitar. It was a $100 pawn shop guitar. I wasn't going to pay to fix her house anymore. Upon packing things came the modem discussion. She was taking an online class, since she now had an internet connection. She would get her own connection in a few days. I was angry with her, but not yet vengeful. I agreed to let her use it until my connection got transferred. A week later, called Jill the day before the cable transfer. She said she would drop off the equipment, oddly, only while I was at work. I texted a reminder, please don't forget to drop off modem, and she responded, I left it in a bag outside your front door. Weird, but whatever. I got home that night, no bag, no modem. 
I text, did you leave it at the right house? Can't find it. She responds, yes. Cable got installed. Still no modem. It'll cost me if I don't turn in the old one. Now I'm vengeful. She's extorted money. I've been nothing but helpful and considerate. She's stolen my things. Now she's probably lying and stealing more things, which will cost even more money. Jill took a pottery class on Thursdays, out of the house for two hours. Her front door had a combination keypad for entry instead of keys. She claimed she would change the combo when I left, but probably didn't know how to do that. Waited until after the time she left, drove past, no one home, parked a block away, walked to the front door, entered the code, still works, straight to her bedroom, not padlocked anymore. Look, there's my router and modem, right where they shouldn't be, because they're in a bag outside my friend's place. Weird. Grab my modem and router, grab my guitar, insert a spare old burned admin copy of Windows 98 into her CD-ROM, boot to CD, set it to work formatting her hard drive. She can complete Windows 98 installation later, complained about Vista anyway, probably won't be able to retrieve her art and homework. Back in my car within 5 minutes, at my friend's place 10 minutes later, Jill's pottery class still had another hour. I texted, finally found the modem. Bag must have blown into the bushes. Thanks for dropping it off. I love to imagine whatever flurry of emotion she must have experienced at that moment. Called me in a frantic rage about 30 minutes later. You stole from me. What? Jill, what are you talking about? You broke into my house and stole from me. Wait, someone broke into the house? I'm sorry, I don't know anything about that. What did they take? Her remarkable psychological gymnastic skills. Walks right up to the ledge of almost admitting that she lied to me and stole my things. After all, such an admission was required for her version of events to make any sense at all and then psychologically backflips away. She couldn't do it. Her story was not compatible with reality. All she could muster was rage and empty threats and that phone call was the last time I ever heard from her. Honestly, at that point, the stuff and the money involved was worth less to me than the fact that she had so much rage but couldn't do anything about it. It brought me a little joy. The strangest part is that she never mentioned her computer at all. I don't regret at all taking back what was mine. But destroying something that someone else loved, even someone I despised, doesn't feel totally great, even 10 years later. I don't recommend that sort of behavior. It's sort of funny to talk about now, but it put me through quite a lot of soul searching, and that one specific component of the story is something that I look back on with regret. Not to be a downer though, I really do enjoy the attention and the conversations have been fun. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day.